Hey, this is Paul with MakeUseOf.com, and in today's video, we are reviewing the Vampire City Venture. Van Powers actually started out as a crowdfunding project, and this is the company's first ever road bike. This is an electric bike with a very sleek design, impressive range, and a relatively competitive price. This is an e-bike that stands out, not just because of its styling, but because you can choose to have it either shipped to you pre-assembled, or if you're adventurous, you can completely assemble it yourself in a Lego-like experience. And so the City Venture offers a lot of value, but there are a few considerations that you should keep in mind before buying one. This bike is ideal for riders between 5'8 and 6'3". Now, incredibly, the bike only weighs 34 pounds. In the US, it's powered by a 350 watt motor, whereas in the EU, a 250 watt motor. US models are capable of reaching speeds theoretically up to 25 miles an hour, whereas in the EU, it's capped at 15 miles an hour. In my experience with my US model though, I never really passed 20 miles per hour. Most impressively, the City Venture's 36 volt, 7 amp hour battery is discreetly built into its aluminum frame, which gives it a clean and streamlined appearance, effectively hiding the fact that it's an e-bike altogether. The bike can achieve an estimated range of about 40 to 50 miles with its built-in battery, and you can almost double that to about 70 to 80 miles with the addition of an optional water bottle style battery, which is sold separately for $300. Now, in my tests, I found that the Venture is best suited for smooth, flat stretches of road. Ride comfort and power can quickly become a concern when bumps and hills are introduced. With the lack of gearing, its carbon drive belt offers lower maintenance in the long run, but requires significantly more effort to accelerate from a stop as well as tackle steeper terrain. Now, provided you have a mostly relaxed and flat commute, the City Venture provides excellent range, styling, and performance which could make it an excellent choice for city dwellers. The City Venture is available in five different colors, including Infinite Silver, Shining Black, Chalk Blue, Ruby, and Neon Purple. Aside from the Shining Black and Infinite Silver color, which we are reviewing today, the other three colors are a dual tone, which makes it look a little bit more exciting than your traditional e-bike. And as you can see, the bike has a good mix of modern and retro styling. The reflective aluminum frame makes the bike look futuristic, while the dual tone brown tires give it a hint of vintage. And in my opinion, the silver color is one of the best looking, especially with the brown seat and brown handlebars. The Venture is a great choice for those who are looking for an e-bike that stands out from the crowd. And the infinite silver, which I'm reviewing, is definitely a head turner. On my very first ride alone, I had at least three people come up to me at various red lights or when I reached my destination to ask me about the bike as they thought it looked very unique. They were especially surprised to learn when I told them that this was actually an e-bike. Each of them asked me where the battery was. And this goes to show how well the City Venture conceals that battery. As mentioned earlier, for an additional $300, you can buy a water bottle shaped 252 watt hour battery, and that effectively extends your range by about 30 to maybe 40 miles. When it's fully assembled, the City Venture features 27.5 inch double wall aluminum alloy rims and 700 by 28 C Kenda tires, which provide a smooth and comfortable ride on flat roads, while its Tektro HD M285 levers and hydraulic brakes offer reliable stopping power. The bike also features an aluminum alloy front fork, Pro Max aluminum alloy handlebars, Pro Max aluminum alloy seat post, and Wellgo pedals. The Venture also comes with a brown Justic Urban Saddle or a black Cell Royal Saddle. And in my case, the brown seat matched perfectly with the brown tires and handlebars on my model. For shorter rides, I found the seat to be comfortable, but over time, especially with the amount of potholes I hit on my ride, the seat became rather fatiguing. And so if I was using this as part of my daily commute, I would look into upgrading the seats or at least adding a cushion cover. The Venture uses a Gates CDX chain wheel and Gates CDN belt drive. And as mentioned earlier, one of the main benefits of this type of drive is that it requires less maintenance and is generally quieter than a chain drive. And when compared to a chain drive, they typically last longer and they're also rust and corrosion resistant. However, one of the biggest advantages, and we'll cover this a little bit more, is that it requires more torque to get moving than a typical non-electric single speed or any belt driven bike with gears. This means it'll likely take a little bit more effort to get up to speed, especially if you're starting from a stop. Additionally, the Gate CDN belt drive can be more expensive to replace if anything goes wrong in the future. Now, while building your own city venture is arguably the biggest selling feature of this e-bike, the experience might not be for everyone. 
I would highly recommend starting with a clean, open spot where you can unbox and lay out all the pieces. Several of the parts look very similar, and so it can be very tricky to find the part number unless you lay them out numerically. Fan Powers includes all the tools you'll need for installation, including Allen keys, wrenches, and a screwdriver. In my experience, the assembly process was rather challenging, especially if you've never assembled an e-bike before like me. As a first time builder, the process was definitely time consuming and somewhat frustrating at specific steps. Part of the instructions could be especially confusing and vague, which made the build process even more difficult than I was expecting. In total, the assembly probably took me about an hour and a half to complete. One of the most difficult parts of the assembly process was that some of the steps had poorly illustrated diagrams, and at least two steps were incorrectly worded. This made it more challenging to understand the correct placement of some of the parts, and as a result, I had to go back and forth between the instructions and the bike, which again further extended the build time. I was building the bike in mid-January while it was 35 degrees Fahrenheit outside, and needless to say, this did not help with my patience. Now beyond this, a few steps did require tightening the bolts to specific Newton meters, and this would require a torque wrench, which of course was not included, so I just did my best to tighten everything to the point of resistance, and so far everything has remained intact, with the exception of only one part that needs to be retightened after my first ride. Now overall, the building process requires a lot of patience, time, and again, ideally some prior experience in bike assembly. The instructions definitely could use some improvement to make the process smoother and easier to understand. So your building experience might vary, but in the end, once it's all put together, you'll be making a great electric bike that's reliable and that you'll be proud to ride. And aside from actually being able to build your own Vancher, one of its best features is its design. Its aluminum build is deceivingly light and despite it housing a battery inside, it manages to weigh just 35 pounds. The Vancher is surprisingly easy to carry, which is a great choice for again for city living. Even though it's an e-bike with impressive range, I can still take it up and down stairs or load it onto public transportation relatively easily. And as someone who lives in New York City and frequently uses the subway, the Vancher fit right into the rest of my commute. As part of my test route, I rode about seven miles from Third Avenue Bridge to Bryant Park. I rode almost exclusively in its top power mode, which offers reasonable acceleration to about 10 to 12 miles per hour. Now, among the other commuters on the road, which had delivery guys using e-bikes and e-scooters off the line, I was usually one of the quickest, though I definitely had to put some extra energy into my initial pushes before the motor actually kicked in. The bike uses a cadence sensor and is responsive, but it lacks a torque sensor, and that's likely to keep the cost down. And as such, you won't find that immediate motor assistance, which you might find on other e-bikes, and that can make start and stop acceleration more difficult. Now beyond 10 miles per hour, the other riders caught up with me relatively quickly and could easily pass me. Many of those larger e-bikes had more top end power, and while I was often topping out at about 17 or 18 miles per hour, they could effortlessly maintain 20 miles per hour. Now granted those other bikes are larger, but I would imagine if I had gears, it would help me out a little bit more. Now even though the bike gives you pedal assistance to about 20 miles per hour, unless I had flat stretches of road, I was probably averaging closer to 12 or 15 miles per hour if I was riding at a comfortable pace. Anything faster than 50 miles per hour would require more energy than I'd like for a relaxing ride, but if I wanted, I could definitely add a little bit more power so I could safely keep up with speed with traffic. The Tektro hydraulic disc brakes do offer excellent stopping power. There were a few instances where I needed to come to an emergency stop, and the Vancher safely kept me from colliding with several jaywalkers and even cars running red lights. And again, without the assistance of lower gears, I found it rather difficult to tackle those steeper hills. And even though New York City isn't particularly hilly, you'll still encounter a fair bit of moderate inclines. Even in its highest power mode, the City Vancher doesn't offer enough power to handle those steeper inclines without users needing to stand up on their pedals to give it the extra power in order to maintain their speed. Just as important, the bike struggles with those rougher terrains and even with minor potholes and uneven surfaces. And so without a suspension system and a rather hard seat, the ride can quickly become uncomfortable and even fatiguing after just a few miles on those roads. The City Vancher is a beautifully designed e-bike that often will turn heads and successfully hides the fact that it's electric. Its excellent range combined with its lightweight frame can make it ideal for city commuting. Assembling it yourself can be an exciting process and give you a greater sense of ownership when you're done. Though, again, it's going to require a lot of time, effort, and likely some frustration. And while the instructions could be better, or having some prior experience with assembling bikes would help, overall the City Vancher is one of the best looking e-bikes you can buy in 2023 for under $2,000. 
and it delivers on range and styling. So thank you again for checking out this review. Let us know your thoughts on this e-bike in the comments down below. This has been Paul with MakeUseOf.com and until the next one, we'll catch you later.